Pixel 6a, solid budget phone, legit camera system, no macro mode. Let's make something happen. Welcome back to another video. My name is Steven Foster. Today we are talking about the Pixel 6a, photography with the Pixel 6a. Really stoked to finally make this video um, because this camera system is still the camera system that's in the Pixel 4a and 5a. Um, it's been in plenty of other mid-range budget phones over the last few years, but this phone and the way that it uses the Tensor chip makes it just all a lot better to use, especially with all that software stuff that Google's doing, trying to make pictures and photos and just getting the most out of this image sensor. And it's just a really nice piece of hardware at the right price if you wanna do photography stuff and also get a great budget phone. But today we're taking a look at something kind of different and I wanted to push that. You guys know this about me. I love pushing my camera gear, whether it's my professional stuff with the Canon EOS R5 and all my like L series glass and stuff that you guys know about on this channel and especially on mobile devices. I love seeing what is possible with these tools because these are the tools that I got started on, not this particular phone, but 10, 15 years ago almost now when the first iPhones and Android phones were coming out. Um, that's how I got started in photography. I was just trying to push those cameras to get the absolute most I possibly could out of them. And today, people who are starting photography now, the young photographers getting into it, even some of y'all who are a little bit older, maybe you're just getting into photography, you've been in another career for whatever, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It's kind of fun to just pick up your phone and get started at something and really push that into a place that it can become a hobby and even a profession. So looking at the Pixel 6a, it does not have a macro mode or macro camera, so no macro photography and software or hardware. So you might be asking, Stephen, how did you do this macro photography? Yet again, moment came in clutch, but it was actually kind of a roundabout way to get there. You see, I saw on Moment's website a few weeks ago with the launch of the Pixel 6a that they weren't going to be supporting the 6a with their case system. If you've seen the case systems that I've used on past phones, past devices, uh, you know they're really easy to use to then just easily fit on a Moment lens and get a different focal length, a different perspective. So I started emailing Moment and trying to figure out, hey, why aren't you guys supporting this device? Uh, it turns out there was something where they didn't get the camera specs for this device in time to build a case that would support putting uh, Moment lenses on it. But Moment did send over their camera clip along with a macro lens so we could try out this sort of, this experiment with saying, what would it look like to have macro photography done on the Pixel 6a. And I'm gonna break this down into three different sections, which is like product photography, doing like product detail type shots, uh, more like textures and looking at things like that, trying to get some like backgrounds that you may use to post in like a story on Instagram, or I don't know, you might use it somewhere else in your repertoire of photos. And then just kind of using macro photography as a way to look at things ordinary, normal things in your daily life, just a little bit differently, just trying to get that sort of you know, perspective on life. I think that's one of my favorite things. Okay, so taking a look at some product photography shots that I was able to do with the Pixel 6a and that Moment macro lens. Uh, I tried it out on this watch. If you guys saw the RZE unboxing watch video that I did a couple weeks ago, um, you know that I'm sort of checking out watches and some stuff like that, kind of intrigued, interested, but watches are really something that has a lot of detail you can see in this particular shot. The focal plane, and you'll notice this throughout all of these photos, the focal plane in this photo is just so tight that like, you know, where the bezel is sitting on top of the crown, along with where the dial's at, it's like this really thin, very thin focal plane of in focus imagery and everything else just starts falling out of focus very quickly. Um, I love how sort of like the minute hand and like even the tail end of the second hand are just falling out. I don't know, I think that's pretty cool. It was nice to be able to get that R in there, the RZE logo, crisp, tack sharp. Um, I was really impressed with that. Next up, you guys know that I'm big into EDC. I am going to do a pocket dump very soon. I gotta get one done before the end of the year. Oh, I can't wait to do it. That one's gonna be a fun one. In this particular photo, I wanted to show you guys this 100 peso coin that I have from before the 
new pesos came out back before the old pesos collapsed. This is actually one to commemorate uh, Mexico hosting the Olympics. My grandfather gave it to me. Uh, just a way to always keep Mexico near and dear, close to my heart. Um, one of my favorite EDC coins that I have, and I really do like how the Macro Lens was able to pick up all these just like fine etchings and engravings into this coin. It's just mm, perfect. And then finally, we have here a Clocks and Colors ring, the Peter McKinnon collaboration Clocks and Colors ring. Um, this is like one of my favorite rings. I don't even know why am I not wearing my rings right now. Oh, I'll actually get into that <laughs> in another part of this video. But for right now, one of my favorite rings. Love that ring. And I just loved, again, how the details come out here, how quickly the focus falls off from your subject. And I didn't even realize just like how how tight some of these silver etchings were done here into these trees, into the side, the rim of the ring. I mean, it's just, it gave me a new appreciation for this ring, being able to photograph it at this like high 10X sort of macro mode. Big fan of that. Okay, up next we're gonna take a look at some textures that I was able to snap. Uh, this first one was actually pretty nuts. This is my RMC Hank, my uh, everyday carry Hank. Um, this is what it looks like right here, just on whatever we're at, I think 24 millimeters. Um, doesn't really look the same. This almost looks like, I don't know, it looks like sackcloth, you know, but it's much finer looking at it in person. I don't know, I think that's one of the cool things about macro photography is you can get some cool textures that the object that you're photographing, you're just like, that doesn't even, that doesn't even look right. It, this actually looked like one of the coffee bags that my wife has from when she was coffee roasting. Super cool to sort of get that texture out of there and I'm definitely gonna use that probably in a story or something else. The, the next up shot that I was able to get was this of like this lava rock that we have in our fire pit. And I guess this bug, or maybe this is a leaf, I don't even know what this is fell on the lava rock. I didn't even realize this when I was taking these photos. And then when I came back to look at it, I was like, okay, I, I still don't really know what this is. Maybe it's a bug. I don't know, maybe it's something from one of our trees. Uh, but again, just getting those textures of that lava rock, being able to then have that and put that as a background somewhere, presenting that information with something, or if you just wanted like a good detail shot, so helpful, so helpful to have that. Since we're doing textures, you gotta do some trees, obviously here in the PNW. A lot of trees, gotta have a lot of trees. I have no clue what this like orange stuff looks like. I threw a light edit on it just because I wanted it to sort of look like Simpatsu Chill, which if you haven't checked out my preset pack, it's linked down below. I do have a Simpatsu Chill template that I was using in Mexico City this past year and I kind of threw that on this and um, yeah, I kind of like how it came out. Um, definitely a lot more orange than it naturally was, but I, I do think this is like a great, texture here. This is like such a cool look that like you're, no other lens is going to get this for you. I don't think most phones even that do have macro modes, they typically rely on their wide angle lenses, being able to use a normal focal length and then amplify that out to a macro mode. It's just a good look. Really dig it. Finally, getting like sort of a different perspective and showing you guys like how this can work in everyday life. This shot right here was actually of my son's little uh, little thumb, just you know right there. So yeah, spoiler alert, my kid did show up. Um, he came uh, earlier this month, but this is now I think the first video that I've been able to record since he's arrived. That's pretty awesome. Being a dad is awesome, and uh, it was just I was like, hey, I have this like macro photography thing I want to do. My son is the smallest he'll ever be right now. Let's see what we can do with that. Uh, this is cool, I, especially with macro photography. You know, kids are so small that um, this almost looks like a normal sized hand, um, but it's definitely not. It's my son that was just born this month. Crazy, uh, super cool to see that sort of perspective. Had to absolutely get a flower shot. We had uh, so many friends and family members drop by, bring over meals, flowers and stuff with the kid arriving and uh, this flower I think had fallen off of a bouquet somewhere and uh, my father-in-law put it into a little vase and I was just sitting there, figured, hey, I'll go for it. It is really cool to see actually how much is in focus here. This is like an almost like halfway bloomed out rose. Still actually got a lot in focus. This is actually a place where I was pretty impressed by how much I could get out of this particular photo. It looks really good. And on the pixel, I don't even think I edited this. I think I maybe just bumped exposure just a tad. And um, yeah, really, really looks good. It really does look good. The pixel, the pixel line of phones always have had 
good cameras, great cameras, even for the price. Finally, this was like, this was like one of the first ideas I had when I got the Pixel 6a in hand and I knew I was gonna do a macro shoot with it. It was like, can I put this against my eye and see like how much can we really get out of this? Uh, the, the short answer is yes, like getting this close, like the lens is literally like just, ugh, so close to my face. Actually, I think I have the diffuser right here for the macro lens. So that right there is how close. This is where the phone sits, right? This is where my eye was. Just super, super close to my face. Super impressed. You can actually see some of the reflections though of uh, both the hood that is like semi-transparent to allow in more light. Um, and if you look really closely at that photo, you can see like my hand and like the phone in the reflection but uh, it's a good shot. And all I had to do was sort of bump some of the saturation on the eye to make it sort of pop a little bit. But again, the Pixel 6a camera, it's batting good. It looks good. I'm really impressed by this. So some final thoughts on this phone, um, kind of like what I did with in the past with the Pixel 4a and also some other moment lens videos that I've done now on the last couple of years that I've been making videos on this channel more consistently. Budget phones are really good now. Like uh, what's the MKBHD saying? Good phones are getting cheap and cheap phones are getting good. This phone now, I've already seen it go on sale for 399 I think here in the United States. I think it'll be back down to the 349 that the Pixel 4a was at uh, just a couple years ago when the 4a launched. It's a great camera system. And if you want a particular different focal length, I've said that before on this channel, I would much prefer having one solid camera on a phone and then being able to adapt different lenses to that camera to get different looks than try to have a phone that gives me two, three, four, however many cameras that uh, in my opinion, just don't look as good as uh, some of the moment lens stuff, particularly with focal length. I know there's you, there's a debate now about like, okay, yeah, the moment lenses are maybe a little bit softer, but um, the I think the big win with the optical science and the moment lenses is that they, they just have this really natural optical science to them. I don't know how to describe it other than like, phones seem to have just like, uh, they always seem to be like weird in between focal lengths. And then when I look at them, I'm like, oh, that was clearly shot on a phone. Versus like when I use a moment lens, like the tele lens or the wide or even the macro lens, I'm like, ooh, okay, that's different. That my, my gut instinct right off the bat doesn't say that's shot on a phone. It's like, that's a cool photo. That's I think what you want when you're taking photos. So all that said, I wanna ask all y'all, what do you think about the Pixel 6a camera system? Is there a particular lens, a particular type of photography you like and enjoy doing with your mobile phone? And um, is there a moment lens that you particularly like using? Let me know if this video helped inspire you or helped uh, change up some of your uh, photography insights, inspiration. Um, I just hope this video got you stoked to get out there take photos, enjoy life. With that, um, if you have subscribed to this channel, I am so grateful for you. Thank you all so much. Please be kind both in life and in the comments below and like this video to send good vibes across the internet. With that, we'll do it again soon. Later. I'm so tired. Being a dad, they tell you, they warn you, so many people warn you, so many kind people, just telling you like, you're gonna be tired, you're not gonna sleep. And like you hear those words, but you don't know what it's like <laughs> until it happens. <laughs> uh, I am so tired, but that's okay. Naps, naps are life. See you guys in the next one. <laughs>